Miko is the first of three brawlers coming into this Brawl Stars update and one that you will be getting for free on December the 14th along with, well, everybody else in the world. I'll show you all about him as well as have him face off against every other brawler in Brawl Stars to see how he fares in base level interactions and then give you some specific game scenarios to go with it as well. As we watch Miko face off against the damage dealers, let me tell you about what you're seeing here. With his attack, he leaps wherever you aim and you can travel over walls, water, or as we can see, over shots as well. Now, for the really observant, you'll notice that Miko's opponents are shooting less, and there is a reason for that. Miko's first star power is called Monkey Business. What this star power does is that when his third bar is fully charged, his next attack if he lands on a target, will also steal one ammo from the enemy and give it to Miko. So he can jump the first shot, steal the second shot, leaving the enemy with just one shot left and giving himself one shot back in the process. Now for this reason, I didn't even use the opponent's first shot because, well, honestly, it wouldn't even really matter, but rather try to time the second shot. But even that is actually hard because Miko can jump really quickly after landing. And it's this quickness and this star power that enables him to dominate so many brawlers in 1v1 situations. He is, after all, classified as an assassin, so it does make sense. Now, that's not to say that he beats all of the damage dealers because if there is one major weakness for Miko, and it is a major one, it's his reload speed. It's really slow, like painfully slow. Now, Miko is good in short bursts, but he is horrible, just horrible in a prolonged fight. And for that reason, in a game, you're going to need to play him much more like Mortis than some other brawlers. You have to find an opponent who has low enough health that you can burst them down quickly, or you can get in your shots and then escape. So against these brawlers, while he certainly has the ability to beat them, all the higher hit point brawlers, he's going to have to be more picky about when he goes in and who he goes in on. Yeah, that sounded interesting. Now, normally a brawler with as little hit points as Miko would get absolutely obliterated by the tanks. And while yes, he does get punished for being this close, at the same time, he dodges a lot of that damage just by jumping over some of it. Now, he comes very close to taking down Bull at point blank range, but he still loses, just like he does for some of these other tanks as well. However, one really fun thing, uh, unless you're a Frank main that is, is that Miko is going to be able to do work against Frank. Much like Mortis, with some well-timed jumps, you can avoid almost every one of Frank's shots. And with this, he actually takes down the highest hit point brawler in the game. That jump is deadly and it can get even more deadly if you equip his second gadget called Presto. When this gadget is enabled, his next attack will leap 34% further, which is a very oddly specific number, which will allow him to pounce on a brawler from further away or use it to get out of a bad situation, which would have been useful to get away from Jackie, but no such luck today as he gets taken down. Now, as you would expect, he struggles with most of these brawlers because once he's dealt all the damage that he can, he's forced to wait around for his shots to reload. But that being said, he does manage to take down BB with some well-timed jumps and help from that star power. Now, in a real game, however, this is going to be a very tough matchup. Almost any of these big damage dealing tanks are going to demolish Miko's health bar. So if you find yourself surprised by a bull in the bush, I mean, you might just want to jump away. Now, he does have some tools to help him do just that because his first gadget is called Clipping Scream. It will cause a small amount of damage to brawlers, but also slow down an enemy for two seconds. So you could use this to keep a brawler close to you or, in this case, make your getaway. Welcome to the hard counter of the century. Brawlers like Edgar, who can leap over walls, just destroy throwers, but Edgar has to wait for his super. Miko, however, just strolls up and attacks. Now, as bad as these interactions are, and they are really grim looking, it's gonna be just as bad in a game. Now, you might think that Penny could stand a chance, but no, no. 
And to add insult to injury, Miko will destroy Penny's Mortar even harder because with his second star power called Record Smash, Miko deals double the damage to any target that he attacks that is not a brawler. So yeah, two quick shots and that Mortar is a goner. This star power works on bots, it works on high safes as well, but where it's really crazy is showdown boxes, which means he will be able to power up very fast. And to make matters even worse, with his super, he leaps into the air, hovering for about six seconds. Now, you can run away from this, but when it comes down, he's ready to unleash all of his attacks. So yeah, you're gonna be able to dominate throwers. Now, of course, there will be some counterplay like a tick super or his gadget, maybe a dynamite stun, but for the most part, if you're playing a thrower and you see a Miko, just like run, just run. Just stay by your teammates and pray to the monkey gods that they look favorably in your direction. Now Miko has a very short range and Marksmen have a very long range. So this is easy, right? Just place the long ranger back and destroy him. Well, not so much. Since Miko is not targetable when he is in the air, nor can he be hit by anything, literally you can just jump over the bullets to reach your target and then you're ready to destroy them. So I just placed the long range brawlers in range right off the bat. And well, you can see the results. Once again, it's a party of destruction and only Miko is invited. That being said, his other major weakness is a lack of health and it comes into play like against Nani. If you time those shots just right, ouch, that's gonna leave a mark. Now, if he isn't jumping when he's walking towards the long range brawler, then it's really not a problem, but that just makes no sense to do. So what we end up with here is just Miko obliterating the long range brawlers without a shred of compassion in his little monkey body. But there is a catch. You see, even though Miko can jump over the shots, in practice, unless you're ready for it, your reaction time has to be pretty darn fast. However, if you're focusing on the shot specifically, you'll get the hang of it pretty quickly and you will be tearing up those long range fragile brawlers in no time. Cause that is after all what assassins do. And speaking of assassins, let's see how he fares against the other ones. Now in base level interactions, Miko performs very well against these brawlers. Crow just gets dunked on and most of Leon's shots they just miss. Edgar's scarf is left punching thin air and Cordelius, well, he can't tame this beast either. But the most hilarious set of interactions here is Mortis versus Miko. With one brawler dashing and the other brawler jumping, it's like the most ridiculous thing you've ever seen. Now, eventually, Miko's star power helps him gain back one shot and just barely overcomes Mortis. Now, Buzz does win, but with only 80 hit points to spare. Fang gets his head knocked off, like literally, like what, what, what was that? So all in all, Miko performs well here, but in a game, he's still severely hampered by his lack of health and his slow reload speed. Now, if you're playing an assassin, just wait for Miko to get low on health before you come in, or wait till he's used up some of his attacks and then you can take him out. But you're gonna have to be careful or else he's gonna pull the Uno reverse card on you. For instance, Edgar leaping in on Miko, well, he could just time the jump, leap into the air, and then get the drop on you. Or, you know what, heck, if he wants to, he can just leap away from you. He is going to be a very tough brawler to nail down. Now, the support brawlers are a pretty varied group of brawlers. From tanky short-range ones like Doug, to more tactical long-range brawlers like Gray. Now, You've got brawlers who can heal in gusts, and ones that support their teammates in roughs. What do they all have in common? Well, they all get beat by Miko. Now the one lone ray of hope here is Pam. She has the health and the sustained damage to beat Miko, but others like Byron, they stand little to no chance. Now in a game, well, this is gonna be a tough matchup for the support brawlers. Now lucky for them that teammates are usually keeping an eye out for these brawlers so that they'll be able to come in and help when needed. Pam will be able to heal herself through the damage if she has a turret handy and Gray can just super away if Miko is leaping at him. But without some assistance or some counters of their own, this is gonna be a rough matchup that you're going to want to watch out for if you're not the one who's playing Miko here. Now our last group of brawlers to face off against Miko here are the controllers. These brawlers, honestly, they don't stand a chance. And, and when I say don't stand a chance, what I mean is they get absolutely dunked on. One after another, they come and 
like dominoes, they fall. Miko's ability to waste the opponent's ammo by them firing into the air and then stealing ammo with his insane star power is just too much for these brawlers to handle. Even the powerhouse Charlie cannot escape the reality of the mic drop known as Miko. I don't know how else to put it. Miko is obscene. He is going to terrorize these brawlers in a real game. Jumping their shots, getting position on them, and then just taking them out. Now, naturally, a really good player is going to be able to do much better, but when Miko is on the field, you're going to have to really watch out for him, and I suspect that he's going to do such a good job of just flat out intimidating players out of their spots so that the positional advantage will go to the team that has the Miko. Plain and simple, it's a bad matchup, it's a rough one, watch out for Miko. So then, You've seen Miko 1v1 versus every brawler in Brawl Stars. Is he going to be any good? Well, in a word, yes. Miko is an incredible brawler. Now, he's not perfect. His reload speed is slower than my grandma trying to figure out a smartphone, and he has about as much health as a malnourished toddler. But you know what? It doesn't even matter because you can hardly hit him. However, what I haven't told you yet is that He's not the easiest brawler to play, or at least not the easiest to play really well. You're going to have to make every single shot count because once you run out of shots, your movement is severely restricted and you're a sitting duck. Now I think his skill cap is just a little higher than average, but for the players that can get really good with him, it's going to be a scary thing to behold. Now in Showdown, his ability to open boxes so fast is going to be awesome. And so Duo and Solo Showdown, you're going to be able to power up really fast. Now in Gym Grab and Brawl Ball, he's going to be great the same places Assassins are great. But he doesn't have a stun or a knockback outside of his super. And if you leap into the air, well then... I mean, you're not on the field for a long time. Like, similar to Janet's super, you're going to have to really pick your spots when you want to use this super. So it's pretty hard to predict how good he's going to be for everyone, since I do think that he's going to be slightly harder to play really well, but I think that it's safe to say that he's going to be a very strong brawler, and more importantly, he's going to be really fun to play. Now, how fun is it going to be facing off against him in every single match? Well... I guess we're going to find out on the 12th, but you can find out how good another brawler is going to be if you come back tomorrow.